Howdy. I have been ratcheting it about this and I decided to make a video. It's basically a read through and hopefully for many of you also a think through because that's something rather important after all. <laughs> But anyway, let's dive into that. We are on fist.org. Welcome to the Anthropocene, Earth's new chapter. The world is getting uncomfortably hot and its life supporting systems are failing. Since 2009, a cloistered band of hard rock geologists and other scientists have toiled on a mission of great consequence. On Tuesday, which here in Finland is already six minutes old, they will deliver the last of their findings, the location of ground zero for the Anthropocene the proposed geological epoch born of humanity's outsized impact on the planet. Yeah, just think about this. Yeah, we have big cities and stuff like that and all these kind of things. But back in the days they were building pyramids and many, many, many other very large structures with very big stones. Like there are tons in weight, the stones they used in the past. Uh, and now it's just our age. We have just made it so all of a sudden. In essence, the Anthropocene. Anthro means human. Working group was mandated by the high priests of Earth's geological timeline to answer three questions. Like, you know, priests in the modern scientific, scientismic paradigm, which is a belief system. That's why they are so offended all the time. And now they admit they have priests. <laughs> anyway, the first roughly is this. Would aliens sifting through Earth's layered rocks and sediment a million years from now discern a human signature distinctive enough to mark a clear geological boundary? If they did, when would it start? Yeah, just remember, I created the metamorphosed rocks within a few minutes in my microwave, which could have rather big implications <laughs> on geology in general, and therefore timelines in general, because history happens usually on the surface of Earth. But if you can change the surface of Earth with electrically induced currents within a few minutes on a small scale. So you could probably also make the same thing on a much bigger scale and even faster. Just saying. It's called scalability. And also time is scalable. Since it's just a matter of perception. It doesn't exist. But anyway, yes, the working group concluded human appetites and activity have evicted the planet and its inhabitants. For the stability of the Holocene epoch, we began 11,700 years ago as the last ice age ended. The world is getting uncomfortably hot and its life support systems are failing. Yeah, you probably noticed that the price for food 
are rising. Some support or yeah, support chains are rather brittle. Like you don't get spare parts or you don't get stuff. Fertilizers, for example, like for farmers, they are very expensive. It's probably not possible to repair the stuff you get broken, like, you know, some excavator or whatever stuff. You have to wait a very long time to get the spare parts. But anyway. The threshold for the Epoch of Humans. First proposed in 2002 by chemistry Nobel Paul Crutzen, they said, should be the mid-20th century. This is when a sharp surge in greenhouse gas concentration, microplastic pollution, invasive species, radioactive traces from atom bomb testing and a dozen other markers of our species, growing influence added up to what scientists now call the Great Acceleration. Mm, yeah. Maybe the sun is experiencing a great acceleration too. Who to blame that? You know. Yeah, it, it's like I have, like I said, I have been rushing about this, making a video in the first place. Now I try to make a read through, and it's just really hard to just make a read through because <laughs> the thing is. If they are now tomorrow telling whatever they're going to tell, there is a new epoch, Anthropocene, like the human age, and the market left on Earth. There, it could be that many people freak out about that, because they don't really understand the whole thing. I think it's still so one of the only structure humans ever built is a Chinese wall, which is seen from satellites. All other structures are basically invisible. But you can see the mountain ranges, the lakes and all these kind of things. They are very well visible from space as well. And if you just think about that, many of those mountain ranges probably got created within a rather short time days mm, or hours or minutes it just took a rather long time for them to cool down but the actual creation act didn't took too long because they were quite likely electrical in nature so it, things can happen rather quickly if you just think of a lightning bolt the ones we are used to or have been used to. We might have to expect some bigger lightning bolts in the future. As people from ancient tales are or have been telling us about mighty thunderbolts. Anyway, let's try to continue. That leaves the question of the golden spike the single lake deposit, coral reef, ice core, or other geological repository of evidence that best embodies the Anthropocene. The winner will be announced Tuesday in joint press conferences at the Max Planck Society in Berlin and the meeting of working group scientists in Lille, France. A paradigm shift. <laughs> Presented as a recommendation, as recommendations, the fruit of the working group's long labors must now be validated by a gauntlet of skeptical, hard-nosed scientists at the International Commission of Stratigraphy and higher up the food chain, the International Union of Geological Sciences. Mm. The chances of that happening are slim, according to almost everyone involved. At one level, the issues 
and the debate are narrow to the point of pedantry. Rock experts quibbling over whether the Anthropocene merits inclusion in the International Chronostratigraphic Chart, the planet's official 4.6 billion year timeline. Yeah, this includes that you had a Big Bang and all kinds of other fantasy things. But anyway, some geologists say it doesn't meet the technical criteria, even as they acknowledge a rupture with the past. At the same time, marking the end of the Holocene and the start of a new epoch will force us to ponder humanity's devastating impact. <laughs> For the first time in Earth's history, a single species has not only radically changed the planet's morphology, chemistry and biology, but is aware of having done so. Yeah. <laughs> if you believe in what they say. Kruzen, who earned the Nobel for identifying the man-made chemicals destroying the protective ozone layer, hoped the concept and reality of the Anthropocene would focus minds on the challenges ahead. It, would be, it could well be a paradigm shift in scientific thinking, he said at a symposium in 2011. A dozen years later, many of the scientists who look at how the strands of the Earth system intersect agree. It's the recognition that, oh my god, we have tipping points. Oh my god, the Holocene is the only state that can support us. Johan Rockström, head of the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research, told AFP. The paradigm shift is the realization that we are leaving the Holocene and entering the Anthropocene. So now, minefield of resistance. Other scientists, however, remain unconvinced, including powerful gatekeepers lobbying against the Anthropocene being adopted as a formal epoch. The conditions which brought about glaciation a dozen mini ice ages over the last million years haven't changed, so we might expect that the Holocene is simply another interglacial. Phil Gibbard, secretary of the ICS, told the Geology Bites podcast last year. Yeah, and there are many others who are talking about the same thing. Sun cycles and such. Which has nothing to do with humans. He suggested the planet could continue in that pattern for another 50 million years. As for the Anthropocene, Gibbard has suggested calling it an event covering millennia of human alternation of the environment. In geology, he noted, an event can be anything from a single raindrop pitting a lump of clay to the great oxidation event that transformed Earth's atmosphere some 2.2 billion years ago. For Jan Salesiewicz, a journeyman geologist who rose to the challenge of leading the Anthropocene working group through a forest of evidence and a minefield of resistance for more than a decade, that's not good enough. Failure to formally, formally ratify the concept. Failure to formally ratify the concept. Failure to formally ratify the concept, he said, would leave the impression that the Holocene conditions that allowed human civilization to flourish are still here. Clearly, they are not, he told AFP. I am concerned that if the word Anthropocene continues to mean different things to different people, then it will lose its significance and simply fade away. In the end, Salasiewicz said, we can only follow the evidence. 
Science is basically trying to establish what's real as opposed to what's not, he said. And the Anthropocene is real. Yeah. So, if this is making a breakthrough, uh, let's see tomorrow if there's any mainstream news about this, that there's a new epoch coming and stuff like that. We could also see it that it could be some kind of a subconscious preparation for the masses that there is something big on the horizon. Huh. Yeah. But anyway, this is just what I think. And obviously it's really hard for me to agree with this in any way. Thanks. Bye.